Hello and welcome back everyone. The lips form the external boundary of the oral cavity. The lips are paired rich vascular structures located outside the mouth and are bound by oral fissures. The two lips, the upper and the lower, meet laterally at the angles of the mouth and function to help us in speaking, chewing and looking aesthetically pleasing. And today we'll be going through the anatomy of the lips. Externally, the upper and the lower lip join at the corners of the mouth at the oral fissures. They are also attached to the skin by a line that binds the lip to the skin that is known as the vermilion border. While internally, they are connected to the oral mucosa through labial and lingual frenulum. The orbicularis oris muscle is a circular muscle that encircles the mouth to form the lips. The term orbicularis comes from the Latin word known as orbis, which means circle or ring, indicating the circular shape of the muscle. It is responsible for closing and protruding the lips. The orbicularis oris muscle has two types of fibers named as the extrinsic fibers and the intrinsic fibers. The extrinsic fibers originate from the other facial muscles while the intrinsic fibers originate within the muscle itself. Extrinsic fibers originate from the buccinator muscle and aid in actions like blowing. These fibers are innervated by the buccal branch of the facial nerve. The intrinsic fibers on the other hand originate from the medial part of the maxilla and mandible and are inserted at the angles of the mouth. These internal fibers form the bulk of the lips enabling lip movements for expressions, speech and functions like kissing. And unlike extrinsic fibers, these fibers are innervated by the marginal mandibular branch of the facial nerve. There are a few other facial muscles that control the lip movements. First is the levator levi superioris. This muscle, as the name indicates, elevates the lip. Some of the other muscles that also help in elevating the lips include levator labi superioris eliquae nasi, a muscle that lifts the angle of the nose along with lips, and zygomaticus minor, which elevates only the upper lip. Similarly, the muscle of the chin, that is the mentalis muscle, elevates and protrudes only the lower lip. The movement of the angle of the mouth is also important since it indirectly moves the lips as well and the muscle that elevates the angle of the mouth is the levator anguli oris. Another important muscle in this regard is the zygomaticus major which makes us smile by pulling the angle of the mouth upwards. The downward movement of the lips is caused by depressor labi inferioris while the downward movement of the angle of the mouth is caused by depressor anguli oris muscle. Now all of these muscles are included in the muscles of the face and are innervated by the facial nerve. But one important distinction in innervation is the muscles that alleviate the lips or the angle of the mouth are innervated by the buccal branch of the facial nerve. While the muscles that depress the lip or the angle of the mouth are innervated by the marginal mandibular branch of the facial nerve. So this was all about the complex muscular anatomy of the lips. So moving on to the nerve and the blood supply of lips. 
The sensory supply of the upper lip is by the infraorbital nerve, which is a branch of the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve. The lower lip is supplied by the mental nerve, which is a branch of the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. So both lips are supplied by the same nerve, the trigeminal nerve, but the subsequent branch is different. That is maxillary branch for the upper lip while mandibular branch for the lower lip. The lower lip receives its blood supply from the superior and inferior labial arteries which arise from the facial artery. Corresponding veins, the superior and inferior labial veins accompany these arteries. The lymphatics of the central part of the lower lip are drained into the submental node while the rest are drained into the submandibular nodes. So this was just a brief discussion on anatomy of the lips. In the next video, I will be discussing other structures and their important anatomical features as well. For more study materials such as study notes, practice questions, quizzes, make sure to check out my Patreon page and consider becoming a Patreon at patreon.com slash studywiththedentist. As always, I will meet you people next time in my next video. Take care of yourselves and your loved ones. Stay safe and goodbye.